So when you uh, when you go on a plane, do you need uh, two tickets for like two seats? You know, funny you ask that question because I've never been on a plane before. Attention wrestling fans, you're in the blast zone for the only podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open and let you know what it really takes to become a professional wrestler. Presented by America's Academy of Professional Wrestling, this is the Buckle Bomb and you're about to get blown up. Welcome back, wrestling fans. <laughs> this is the Buckle Bomb. I am your host, Buck Bomber, and you are in the blast zone of the only podcast where we blow kayfabe wide open and let you know what it takes to become a professional wrestler. Oh yeah, again. Brother. I am Buck Bomber, and this is the Buckle Bomb presented by AAPW, and it's time to get blown up. This week, I am joined in the bomb shelter by. What is your gimmick name again? Lalo Luna. Lalo. Yes. By Lalo Luna. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And ducking and covering with us is one Zeke Rose. Oh, yeah, brother. What's up? <laughs> uh, you know, Sky. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, you guys been having a good week? Oh, yeah. I think it's been a good week. What about you? Uh... Uh, 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 honestly, a bit up and down, but it only gets better from here. Uh, it's, 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 we're, we're breaking kayfabe, but shoot, you don't have to. Yeah. I know. Oh, is it? Oh, f- <laughs> okay, take out the part where I'm. In. Should we explain it? Should yeah, explain y- it? yeah, you can. Okay. Um, <laughs> so our guest this week, uh, Lalo, um, he uh, suffers from. Uh, is that the right word? Suffer? I don't think you're suffering. It's not much. It's not much of a suffer. It's just like a, I experience a little bit of a stutter every now and then. Okay. Okay. It it, it usually happens with like new experiences such as this. You okay. know, like I've never been in a situation like this before, so it might come out a little bit. But as I'm getting accustomed okay. to it, it should like die out a few. So uh, it's Monday. Do you ever feel like? Do you feel like Sunday or Monday is the start of the week? Um, I always like to think that Sunday starts the week. Really? Can't yeah. relate. Can't relate. I, I say that. Well, honestly, I say that. I say that Monday for me is more of a start because you know, whenever you you think like the start of a week, you're thinking like, okay, tomorrow I gotta I gotta start doing this for this week, and you know, it just happens so that the beginning of the day you're talking about is Monday. Yeah. Oh. But I like I like to think that I like to start my weeks off really chill and laid back and relaxed because the week is long. So that's True. just my approach with it. Well, I feel like Monday is the week's debut. And that is this week's topic. Oh. Debuting. Because uh, Lalo, you uh, debuted uh, two days ago. Yes, I did. First time in front of a real crowd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a so, lot of. Uh, that is a huge step. On the road to becoming a professional wrestler, because for me, you debut even in a school show in front of 40, 50 people. That's the big moment, ain't it? Yeah, it, it, especially for me. Absolutely, absolutely. Man. Uh, so how'd it go? It was. It was honestly. It was. It was really nerve wracking at first, but like as the day went on, I'm like. All right, this is the moment. This is the time. It's mm-hmm. happening, happening today, happening at this time. And um, I was, I was telling my family when I found out. I told them, I'm like, hey, I'm debuting this week. Go ahead, come check me out if you want to. They ended up taking majority of the of the crowd that night, so that just made it a little more easier for me. Right. Yeah, it's always good. It's always good. Um, any thoughts? Any regrets? Anything you're really proud of yourself about? Uh, proud of myself? I'm proud I was able to go through the match without, without like a second hesitation. It was just like mostly because it was really simple, but also it was it wasn't like go 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 go. It was cool breeze. Let's get it done and it's, slow, it's all it good. Slow, yeah, yeah. yeah, take it slow. All right, uh, Zeke. I see you over here. Like, I think as soon as I asked the second question, you were like, "This guy." 
I wanted to talk. Well, can I, can I just say something real quick? What's um, up? So I saw Lalo's family in the, you know, in the audience. And I specifically remember a little old woman, you know, just staring like nails into my soul. <laughs> like, so, of course, you know, I... I beat down Lalo a couple weeks ago, and his mom's or his grandmother saw it, and I actually ran into her in the bathroom on my way to getting ready for my match, and like I said, she just wouldn't say hi to me, and then during the match, she was just booing me, so yeah, they re they really love this guy, and it made my <laughs> job easier that night too, actually. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. So, um, moving away from his debut, what was <laughs> your debut like? My debut, my debut was, ah, it was pretty easy breezy, like, you know, Lalo said. Um, I actually had my debut match against Michael Arrow, which that's when I debuted as the monster. You know, I had my face paint. It was really trashy. Uh, looked like I just stepped out of a trash can. Um, but you know what? Overall, like, uh, just getting the feel of the crowd and getting, you know, used to being under the lights, it's something that I always remember. Absolutely, absolutely. I remember, I remember my debut. Um, I debuted as a manager, you know, because I still couldn't wrestle my way out of the paper bag. Debatably, I still can't. But um, uh, and I remember, um, and uh, Pops actually brought a guy around to help me out. You know, um, uh -huh. his name was um, was Scotty Bickley. Um, and I always kind of think, you know what? He's the guy who held the bicycle the first time I was without training wheels. You know, yeah. Um, I owe a lot to him, and. Um, Sorry, sorry. It's a, he's, he's no longer with us, so I oh, also feel like Because, dude, he gave his last three months of his life to teach me how to how to talk good on the mic, which I'm not talking very well right now about this. Um, but uh, anyway, 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 anyway. So I come out with him. We, we come walking in, and I remember I grabbed a chair, and I said, screw this chair, <laughs> and I threw it at the ground because I was like – because our thing was, you know, we were coming in, we were saying – Man, I hate AAPW. This place sucks. Uh, oh my. I go to concessions. I'm like, hey, goth girl, get out of here. <laughs> and, um, you know, then Pops does his whole, oh, whoa, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, hey, hey, what's going on here? And then I'm like, uh, hi, uh, I'm, 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 I'm Benjamin. Uh, oh, I mean, I'm Buck Bomber. Um, I didn't say anything else of the sort because I'm Buck Bomber. Um, and then I, I said, I said, okay, now, now, now talk to. Buck Buchanan instead. Uh, and um, I remember at the end of the night, um, my pants split. Oh, oh no. <laughs> now, you know what? I'm happy about it because I got that out of the way my first time ever in front of a crowd. Pants just split wide open. Oh, um, like a lot of people say they like the jacket. And I'm like, yeah, there used to be a pair of pants that went along with it. They last one night. Oh, that um, sucks. No, nah, it's all good. I felt really dumb wearing like the jacket and the pants together. Um, but yeah, no, um, your debut is something you never forget, you know? No, and, and it's funny that you mentioned that story because I would want something like that to happen to me on my first day just because we're wrestlers wearing tights and underwear and we're in front of large crowds and, you know, getting out of your comfort zone is always hard. So I, I guess that kind of makes things easier. Yeah, yeah, and it's like I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm like, you know what, if I have some clothes rip, that's fine. Uh, like, um... Actually, the pair of pants I got after that, um, three, four years later, they finally ripped. I, 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 <laughs> I stepped through the ropes, and I hear it, and I'm like, I wonder where that rip it. Right in the cross. I'm just oh, like, no. Okay. It was when I was leaving. It was when I was leaving, so I'm like, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> time, to, time to work roaming cam and just hope they don't pan. <laughs> Hopefully, they're going in for like... You know, the nips up, part, yeah. not not full body here. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Shit. It's funny that you actually mentioned the pants ripping at the crotch area because when I was watching my debut back uh, on Sunday, I noticed that the attire I was wearing it was during one of the uh, one of the times I got racked on the ropes. <laughs> my freaking scrubs ripped right on. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> where, where, uh, right on the crotch area <laughs> as well. Oh, okay, okay. And, to be popular. Yeah, and um, what's funny is that there was a there was a rip that happened the same day, but I didn't pay much attention to it because it was on my leg. I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll fix that later. 
I come to find out, and I go in the back, and I'm like, it's really breezy. I look down. Ah, oh, shh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good, good job censoring yourself, because... Um, the Buckle Bomb, although we blow up kayfabe, we maintain decency. Yes. Censor that is pretty much our catchphrase already. Um, <laughs> uh, so, okay, okay. We, we've talked about debuts. What about, like, the week leading up to a debut? How would you guys feel? Zeke? I was nervous, man. And um, I know, like, there's a point where you think, man, I'm not ready, you know? And I, I had that conversations with Pops, and he was just like, you know what? This is going to be a lots of things you're not ready for for the business. You just, you know, <laughs> have to just be a professional. This is what you signed up for and get ready for it. Um, but the night before my debut, I actually injured my hip uh, in a practice la- match with Lawrence. And I was worried about that. But, um, you know, like you say, you have to learn how to – do all kind of things, including, you know, taking care of your body the night before. So those are all lessons that I learned that week. Definitely, definitely. Like, And as you go on, like, it becomes like, can I do this now because I need to be good later? Uh, that I've, I've had that happen like a million times where I'm just like, you know, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this show, but I've got another show to do tomorrow. And I'm like, I got to drive four hours there and four hours back. Dude, do, yes. I, do I really want to have back pain yes. going there and back? Uh, but um, what about you? Uh, um, so the week leading up to my debut, it was it, it was definitely a lot of emotions, a lot of nervousness, like I said earlier. Um, a lot of emotions because when I first signed with AAPW, we told three people in my family who were really excited. One of them was my uncle, the guy rest his soul. He passed away my third week here. Yeah. He passed away my third week here, and and I wore the shirt we wore for his funeral on the day of my debut to remind me that he's going to be in there with me in the ring. But other than that, other than that, it was just really a lot of nerves, <laughs> yeah. a lot of nerves. Um, and pops, I think he, I, I think he pretty much gave everyone the speech, like the day they started or, or like the day they had their debut. But he gave me the. Uh, the stuff you're feeling right now, the day you stop feeling that is the day you quit. And once he told me that, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm a little more chill now. Like, I was still nervous, but mm. it, it wasn't, like, affecting me anymore. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard him say that. You know, the day, you're, the day you're not tense, the day you're not, you know, nervous is right. the day. That said, he says that's when, you know, AAPW is going to close down, when he's not <laughs> nervous about a show. Um, and I feel that. I feel that. Like, eventually... Like what? You gain some confidence, but there's still that nerve, you know. Like I, oh, yeah. I always know I'm like, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna grab the mic. Maybe I won't even grab the mic. Maybe I'll just yell at the crowd a couple times. <laughs> They'll go crazy. I'll be like, ha ha. Maybe I'll fall down once or twice, and they'll, you know, pop of the night. I mean, back in the day, it used to be pop of the night. Oh yeah. Now, uh, now you know the new AAPW stars. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that um, they're starting to shine. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, no, I'm still nervous about it. I'm, like, if I actually have to wrestle for once, I'm always just like, <laughs> that's when it really hits you. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> managing's easy though. <laughs> if you ever get tired of wrestling but still want to have fun, just manage. I'll uh, keep that in my, you know. Back oh, pocket. you can't. <laughs> Can I speak as you? No. 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 I can't be a, a manager someday, like Jake the Snake. Maybe when you're like old, like old, old. But old. until you're like, until you're like 60, 70, I would not buy that this big <laughs> dude needs somebody else to wrestle for him. I, like, yeah. like I actually, I actually worry sometimes that I'm I'm too tall for a manager. Um, which, you know, being shoot five ten, um, I I've never worried about being too tall. I've always worried about being too short until it's time to manage, and I go. I don't make this guy look big. I make this guy look normal size. <laughs> um, you know, hashtag manager problems. Um, <laughs> they wish I was short black. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. That's Benjamin Greenback. <laughs> oh yeah. That's oh, yeah. Right. Greenback. Uh, yeah. Where's guy. Greenback? By the way. I don't know. He's, he's he never seems to show up during the week. Really? I don't know, but he he owes me some money for all of that all that water he spilled in the ring. 
Is that from you? No, from uh, from when he was with Wentworth. Uh, okay. So what now? What what do you what do you feel now that you've debuted? What what kind of what kind of emotions and what are you what are you what are your thoughts moving forward now? I'm excited. This is this has been a dream of mine since since sixth grade, and like now that it's happened, I'm like, all right, now it's really time to get the ball rolling. Now it's time to start getting my name out there. Start to start to show that I that I actually do belong here. Nice, nice, nice. What about you, Zeke? What were you feeling after your debut? Well, I mean, I was like, you know, Lala, I was overcome with emotion just because it was a, a journey. I think whenever I first made my decision to be a pro wrestler, it took like almost three years for me to debut, um, training in and out. So I was just happy, you know. Um, and now that I look back from then until now, um, so much, so much different feeling, you know, as far as excitement goes. Um, it's, I'm more in the driver's seat, so I feel like I'm more in control, and that nervousness goes away, and it's more excitement. So it's yeah, cool to see where a year brings from, you know, debuting to now. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Some things change, but a lot of things just stay the same, you know. Oh yeah. You know, eventually you get the feeling of I can do this. But you always got that, but will I do I can do it right, yeah. but will I do it right? Or when will I do it right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I had a thing that happened to me uh, the other day. Um, I was getting slingshot in, and I was like, oh, but there's somebody there. Oh, my God. Oh, I guess I'll go, like, kind of shallow on it, and ooh. Uh, ah, so that, that was one of those days where I was like, I know I can do this right, but... Uh-huh. Will I'm just I not going to because I don't want to <laughs> land on the other. Um, oh man, I know how that feels. <laughs> so, if there's anything you could change about your debut, what would it be? Um, not much really. I mean, I guess the confidence factor, just because I know how important a role it plays uh, in performing, and uh, you know today but that's the only thing I would change everything else you know the the feeling of walking to the ring for the first time having eyes on you getting the reaction from the crowd um, those are all things that uh, you know made everything worth it and like I said I wouldn't change a thing basically nice. Lola or Lalo <laughs> I'm sorry I've been avoiding saying it because I can't remember it's okay um, yeah like Zeke said the like walking to the ring Mm-hmm. part that I wouldn't I wouldn't change a thing about I wouldn't change a thing because like it wasn't it wasn't perfect but it was decent enough that I wouldn't want to change anything you know mm-hmm. it's literally just the walking to the ring part because if you saw I had a freaking stuffed animal with me <laughs> yeah um, I mean AAPW and its earlier I don't know if you know this but AAPW and its earlier iterations have a have a long legacy of Hey, you're crazy guy. Here's your stuffed, stuffed animal. animal. <laughs> Get yeah. out there and, and show them how crazy you are. That, that's what Pops told me. That's like, what... No, for real. You literally, uh, the way you do your hair now, that's literally, that's that, um, that's that Psycho, Psycho Simpson, Simpson cut. Yeah. Which, um, funny enough, um, Psycho Simpson was actually there when I first had my first inkling of, I want to be a professional wrestler. Um, the, the earlier iteration of AAPW came uh, to my middle school, you know, for like some kind of, you know, pep rally presentation thing where they were like, where they were like, hey, kids, don't do drugs. And I was like, I will never do drugs. <laughs> I will never do drugs. Yes. The, like the Crusaders were there, um, which I don't think anybody remembers who they are. But to me, I was like, those guys are the coolest. They're doing their fake nondescript uh, European accents <laughs> but I'm like those are the coolest guys ever and I'm never gonna do drugs ever let's go and they're like yeah there's a pro wrestling school I'm like I don't wanna go to pro wrestling school um, I went home and I told my dad that and he was like no shut up <laughs> <laughs> um, but Psycho Simpson was there and um, you know he was like I'm crazy but doing drugs that's just dumb or something. <laughs> he said something like that but um, I don't know, and I remembered him. And one day later, I saw him on Hustle. I don't know if anybody remembers Hustle. I love Hustle so much. It's this uh, it's this Japanese promotion that's not around anymore. Uh-huh. 
Um, one thing I've always loved is, and and people will quote me on this all the time. I love when pro wrestling is stupid. <laughs> I love when it is stupid, and I love like I love this like post ironic era where we just go, yeah, it's stupid, but it's fun. Um, and hustle like. Hustle really leaned into that all the time. They were like, let's be dumb, let's be fun. Um, you know, the, the the CEO, he's a cyborg who can point at a guy and go bang, and then just explosions. And I'm just like, I'm so here for this. I love this. This is the best. But I was watching it one time, and then Psycho Simpson was there. And I'm just like, that's eh, Psycho Simpson. What's he doing in Japan? This is crazy. And it, it has one of my most favorite moments in any wrestling match ever. Okay, so the guy he was wrestling, I can't remember his name for the life of me. Um, but, you know, he had them, like, MMA gloves on and stuff. You know, his oh, thing is, Lord. I punch people. I punch things. Ah, I'm a punching guy. There is a point where uh, Psycho Simpson is coming at him with a chair, okay? You know, folding chair, coming at him, swinging overhead. The guy swings at it. Punches the seat right out and it goes flying and I'm like, oh my goodness, that is the coolest. You, you know, you know, you know, we 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 uh we exalt the folding chair as this you know undefeatable weapon that you know brings men to their knees, and he punched right through it oh. and I'm just like, and the, and the seat flew. I was like, let's go, <laughs> let's go. Um, so yeah, you have a you have um. You're kind of continuing that tradition, so I'm, I'm hoping to one day see somebody punch the seat off of a chair you swing. <laughs> um, God, I wish I could punch through a chair. <laughs> That'd be so great. I don't know. Maybe I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turn face and then do that. Yes. See a heel do it, they'd just be like, boo! No. I wanted him to get hit. Whenever I decide to be a good guy, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um... So yeah, what was the, what was the moment you decided to be a pro wrestler? Well, at six, you said sixth grade. Yeah, yeah it's sixth sixth grade is when I. So my family used to love taking me to wrestling, but I didn't like it as like a little kid. I'm very reversed. There were people who say, "Oh, I love wrestling as a little kid, but I don't like it anymore." Oh, I'm the same way. I, um, yeah, I was completely different. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I didn't mean to cut. You. I'm. I'm just, Again, AAPW is a school. I'm still learning how to run a podcast. Right. right? <laughs> I was gonna say, um, I didn't think I liked pro wrestling until I was 25. Um, I, it, I still don't like watching it on TV. I'm still just like, <laughs> oh, and here I am trying to emote now, like anybody can see on the podcast. Um, but then I saw it live. I, I just saw an indie show. You know, uh, like Zach Taylor was there. Um, a lot of other guys from AAPW were doing it, and I was just like. I understand now, and I love this. This is yeah. great. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I talked to a lot of people who were like, oh, I've loved it since I was a little kid, or oh, oh, this and that. And I'm like, yeah, I've, I've only liked it for like five years. And they're like, oh, what are you trying to do in the business? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Figured I'd just do it now. <laughs> like, I don't have a lot of time to, to, to love it for 20 years and then try. <laughs> Yeah, as sixth grade is when I first saw, what was it? I think it was SmackDown. Yeah, it was SmackDown when, shoot, what was that? 2013, 2014, I think. I think CM Punk was still there. And I saw a match with him and uh, I think it was Sin Cara? I, I don't know, it was so long ago, I don't really remember. But I remember seeing CM Punk's like charisma and the, uh, and the knee lift in the corner. I was like, whoa. I want I want to do that stuff, and then freshman year of high school, my English teacher who who knew zero stuff about wrestling comes up to me one day. He's like, "Hey, I know you want to be a wrestler. There's a wrestling school here in town." I'm like, "What? What are you talking about?" He's like, "Yeah, just look it up." I'm like, "Okay, look it up." Sure enough, it directs me here to AAPW, and of course, like a good student, I waited until I waited until I graduated high school to a. Uh, Go ahead and come. Yeah, how old are you? I'm 18. I'm finna be 19 in uh, July. Okay, I thought you were like finna 22 be. or something. <laughs> What'd you say? I said finna be. I'm finna be. Finna be. <laughs> finna be. <laughs> uh, how about you, uh, Zeke? When did you like? When did it? When did they? When did it click? When was the moment? I mean, 
Of course, I was one of those guys who grew up watching pro wrestling as a kid. Um, my, my dad was in the military, so I traveled around a lot, and that was basically all that I had. Um, it was your constant. It was my constant, yeah. I mean, I've never been to a show uh, just because my dad was always busy, you know. So uh, wanting to go to a show, uh, I went to one in Houston, uh, I guess back in 2008 or something, 2009. Uh, this was like when reality wrestling was just like, you know, starting. Yeah. And I wanted to, I wanted to train, and it was just too expensive. And so uh, yeah. it was very expensive <laughs> back in the day. So I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I ended up joining a band and touring with them for a couple years. Oh, really? And I retired from the band in like 2013 and mm. decided to go back to school and mm. saved up a little money and decided, okay, uh, I saw a little uh, advertisement on like Facebook or something about a fantasy camp at Reality of Wrestling. Yeah. So I paid for it. And I did it, and it was tough and hard, but I, I, I liked the, the atmosphere. The fantasy camp was yeah, tough. Yeah, yeah, the fantasy camp was tough. I remember, I remember reading about that, and I thought, I thought fantasy camp was just, you know, fun time, you know? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> um, Booker T made us work. Like, he would put the dummies down and have us do, like, the, the jump over, drop down, oh, hit the rope oh thing. Oh, my God. Uh, we did, like, so many, like, push-ups and jumpy jacks and man maybe it, they should call it uh, it was like a mini boot camp maybe to be they should honest call it reality you. camp instead of fantasy camp <laughs> that's basically what it was was a reality camp but I was just like man yeah. at the end of it I was just like dude I could totally do this so I signed up uh, 2016 and did it for a couple months and just my physical ability was just so like it was sad I couldn't get through like three weeks of training without hurting myself. So Were I, you not already like a power lifter or whatever you do at the time? Nah, man. I was just lazy. I, I, I sat on the couch and played RPG games all day. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, fast forward to like 2019, I moved here. Um, prior to coming here, I did like find AAPW on a Google search. And I told myself, you know what, if I can get in this school, this is like my last shot at doing this. I'm just going to take it so serious. So I talked to Steve-O when I got here. Um, he started talking to me about the school, and I was just really touched by Steve-O uh, just because I could just see, like, the passion coming out of his, Absolutely. like, voice and his eyes. Like, his, he had that determination in his eyes, and I was just like, I want what that guy has. And I was just like, all right. I told Pops I'd be back in a couple months to sign up, and sure enough, March 2020, that's when I, you know, made it happen. But, you know, COVID, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but then started again in uh, January 2020 and never looked back ever since. Nice, nice. Uh, circling back around a little bit, uh, I had a few things I wanted to bring up. Yeah. Um, I remember, because um, when I was looking into wrestling schools, because I couldn't remember the name that, you know, the guys had told me, you know, four years before I actually tried to, like, sign up. Right. Uh, I was looking at Reality of Wrestling, and um, I kept looking for, like, a price online, and it was like, you will discuss it with Booker T. And I'm like, that sounds like the scariest <laughs> thing anybody <laughs> discussing money with, discussing unspecified money with Booker T. I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> you know, actually, I think I had that conversation with Charmel. Oh. You know, that that's honestly, I mean, Charmel's so sweet, so <laughs> sweet lady. But you know, she could have that look where it's just like, I don't It'll know, switch off. switch off, do the little <laughs> neck thing, you know, give me that little stare down. I'm just like, oh no, okay. But yeah, um, really nice, really nice couple. Like you think about Booker T, and you're just like, God, he's this big guy. But then I stood next to him, and I was just like. He's short. Well, no, he's a little taller than me. Oh, okay. But still, he just like looked at me and he was just like, "Oh yeah, we can use a guy like you." And I was like, "Ah, cool. This feels <laughs> good. I got validated by Booker T, even though I'm I'm a, I'm fat." So, <laughs> but um, another thing was, um, yeah, no, dude, Steve loves this business. I can think of maybe like four people who I've ever met who love it as much as he does. Um, and, and, you know, he's been doing this for, like, 
12 years now, I think. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm four years into this, and I'm already like, uh-huh. man, I'm starting to lose steam. Like, I, I love uh-huh. doing this. I love uh-huh. doing shows. I love doing this podcast now, too. Um, I like working production for the show. But I'm just like... I don't know how I don't know how much longer I can give you know a hundred percent like I've I've have I've said I'm on hiatus you know uh-huh. and I'm like man three years and I'm already like ah, I'm kind of on hiatus I just want to sit at home and eat chips <laughs> the 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 perseverance to continue doing this continuing to bump you know I'm just like, oh man it's a it's a mentality man yeah yeah it's it's crazy because we wake up every day or every other day and say. I'm going to destroy my body today, you know, <laughs> whether it be in the gym or in the in the ring. Uh, I respect anybody who can, like, stay in the business for a very long time. So right. that that's a good point, man, oh, yeah. uh, just to keep that same fire and that same passion. And, you know, see a guy like him uh, who's respected, like, everywhere I've gone, you know, Um <laughs> I hope I could, in in everybody else here at AAPW, could, you know, continue that that you know that tradition that um, pre- that presentation that Stevo has given AAPW, you know. So, uh, like I said, when I had that conversation with him, I I just knew this had to be the place. Nice, nice. Well, it's about that time again for ABP. Always be plugging. Oh, Lalo, what you got to plug? Um, not I know sh- you just debuted, so. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I just debuted. Did uh, you make an Instagram yet? No, not yet. Sorry. Go it, home and do that right now. Yeah, I um, will. The and, um, moment I get home, it'll be up. Um, and talk to Jason, our, our wonderful cameraman who uh, has been taking photos for APW. Oh, for yes, definitely. Three years now? He's a great oh, dude, yeah. great dude. Yes. Uh, make sure you get on his uh, mailing list. Yeah, um, yes. it, he gives you something to post like every week. He gets um, he gets those really good angles. Great, yeah, no, great. no. This is this is this is this is this is a business of exposure and sometimes you have to expose yourself. Yep. And so <laughs> you know what he said. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, you know my mind did not go there, guys. I didn't either. I know. I know. <laughs> Until I saw his I face, like, I, I, I realized I was like, I'm the only person who thought that was weird to say. Um, <laughs> that totally flew over my head. <laughs> you know, I should have just, I should just kept going. I should just kept going. Um, I knew what you mean. But anyway, anyway, no, nah, you got to get on them socials, man. Oh get yeah, on them socials. definitely. Get the Lalo name out there. Um, well, Zeke, what do you got to plug? Well, I mean, you can follow me or for me on my Facebook page, which is Zeke Rose. You find a lovely picture of me and my awesome sunglasses. Um, Instagram will be Zeke underscore loading. Um, also, I want to put a shout out or a plug in for my girlfriend, uh, reinvent, Reinventing Kelsey Rose. She comes up with some awesome shirts, which uh, two of my T-shirt designs are uh, from, and we are coming out with another one. Uh, we are also opening a uh, online store or Instagram store, um, Shopify store. I'm sorry. Um, Iron Two Rose Trading Posts and also her training company or her training a group which is Iron Rose Strength. Whoop whoop. <laughs> okay, okay. You got any bookers coming up? Uh, yes. So, uh, looks like I will be, uh, of course, here at AAPW uh, this Saturday. Right. Uh, Tate Fist match against Leroy Brown since, you know, he wants to go the distance. Zeke Rose and, can definitely do it. And for the listeners at home, uh, that was actually two days ago. Yes. That, that happened. Oh, yeah. Very hard-hitting match, but I'm, I'm, I'm ready for more. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, the next one uh, will be uh, actually June 25th. Uh, okay, AW- that's in the future still. Yeah, yeah, AWR. And then uh, for anybody who is um, close to Uvalde or has heard of the Uvalde incident, um, I will be going out to Uvalde uh, July the 4th for a show um, they're having at the fairgrounds. So uh, look up Next Level Wrestling because that's where they are based out of Uvalde. Uh, there you'll find a link to donate to uh, you know the the incidents for all the families who are affected. So uh, please give that a look. Pray for you, Valde. All right, all right. 
Okay, it's kind of a kind of a kind of a downer note to end on. Hey, Do you guys remember? Have you guys seen a uh, Have you guys seen the new uh, Top Gun with? Um, no, I want to. With Tom Cruise, I'm, I'm not really a huge fan of those neither kind of am movies. I, neither am I. <laughs> Do you know what I remember? What I remember Tom Hanks doing? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I guess I don't remember Tom Cruise that much. But you know what I'll always remember about Tom Cruise? What's that? Running away from that explosion in uh, Mission Impossible. Oh That's, yes, the, that movie has some awesome explosions. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, no, just just running down a hallway from an explosion, though. Like the buckle bomb listeners who have now been blown up.